is talking about uh, GST and SGST. That means the GST includes the state GST that is SGST plus central GST. Both are included in GST and both have the equal quantity. So if SGST is 10, CGST also is 10. So my problem is I need to find what is the rate at which SGS, SGST has been calculated. So what we will do for 500 rupees, uh, the GST was 15, for 100 that will be how much. So what we will do is use a cross multiplication rule, 100 times 15 over 500. So the result I will get is 3. So this is 3% is your uh, state GST. So 3% central GST. That means 3% plus 3% which will be equal to 6% is the GST. Therefore the right option is D. In the second problem he says the discriminant uh, what is the value of discriminant if the roots are real and equal. We know that if D is equal to 0, roots are real and equal. If D is less than 0, the roots are imaginary. If D is more than 0, the roots are uh, uh, real and unequal. Now therefore when I say D, what is D? D is nothing but it is uh, B square minus 4AC for a quadratic equation AX square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Therefore, d has to be equal to 0 for the roots, roots to be real and equal. Then the answer is your option number c. Let us look at problem number 2. In this case, it is specified that the function f of x is equal to uh, 2 times x square minus a times x minus 1. Now if we have a function let us say g of x, there is some function which is and for which x minus a is a factor for this function g of x. That implies then g of a is equal to 0 by the statement of Riemann theorem. Here you need to understand what Riemann theorem is. Riemann theorem specifies that if x minus a is a factor for the function g of x then f of this g of a is equal to 0. Let me apply the same for the given problem. Here let us take x minus 1 is equal to 0 therefore x is equal to 1. Now I will try to find f of 1. When I am trying to find f of 1 we will plug in the value of x with 1. So this is 2 times 1 square minus a times 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Upon simplifying this becomes 2 minus a minus 1 is equal to 0 or this becomes 1 minus a is equal to 0 or a is equal to 1. Therefore we got the value of a is equal to 1 implies the option, the correct option is b. Now let us try to understand uh, how to solve this problem number 4 which talks about order of a matrix. But before I go into the solution of the problem, please remember this. That means, that is if I want to multiply two matrices, let us say A whose order is M cross N and B the order is N cross K. This is matrix is possible, matrix multiplication is possible if and only if the number of columns in A should be equal to number of rows in B, only then matrix multiplication is possible. Once the matrix, now I know that multiplication is possible because columns in A is N, rows in B is N. Now the order of A cross B is eliminate N, it becomes M cross K. This is the order of the resultant matrix. Now the question is a little bit different. If you look at the question, the given problem this is 2 cross 2 matrix. This I don't know but the answer 
is 2 cross 1. Right? 2 rows and 1 column. Now in this that case what is the order of x he wanted to know. That means the or the x if I am looking at x the order has to be 2 and then I don't know the next part of it. The reason being is the number of rows in column A should be equal to number of uh, number of columns in uh, A should be equal to number of rows in B. Now, in that case, I've equated these two are done. Now, the result is I need to get one. Therefore, I can say you just fill in one. Therefore, the answer for your uh, problem is two cross one. Therefore, the order of x is two cross one. Now let us look at a solution for problem number 5. He has given an arithmetic progression, but how do I know this arithmetic progression? If I look at uh, the common difference, if I look at common difference, common difference is negative of 3. That is uh, 57, 54 minus 57 is minus 3, 51 minus 54 is again minus 3, 48 minus 51 is also again negative of 3. That is a common difference. Now, how do I get the nth term? The moment the common difference is same, then I can say the given series is in arithmetic progression. If the given series are in arithmetic progression, then nth term that is a n is equal to first term a plus n minus 1 times d. Now, because we want the nth term, so a 8 is equal to first term is 57 plus n minus 1. What term are we looking at? We are looking at 8. 8 minus 1 times what is d? d is minus 3. Now let us simplify. a8 is equal to uh, 57 plus 7 times negative of 3 which is equal to uh, 57 minus 21. So 57 minus 21 is nothing but it is 36. 36 it is option 1. Option A is correct which is 36. Let us look at uh, problem number 6. It says that point A whose coordinates are P and Q is invariant. The moment you uh, hear the word invariant your thought should immediately run in all possible directions in, this, in the sense it should you need to understand that whenever the point is invariant implies I am talking about image being itself. So image is not away from the line. Generally, if I take x axis and y axis, and if there is a point a point here is a comma b, then its image in x axis will be say p dash, and that will be a comma minus b but the word used is invariant implies the image is itself therefore blindly i can say a dash is also equal to p comma q that means option c is correct if you look at the question number eight students please remember this you got to be very very careful the moment you get a problem something like this you need to get back to your basics that now understand what is the volume of a cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is given by pi r square h, right? Where radius is r and height is h. If radius is r and height is h, what is the volume of a cone or right circular cone? It implies 1 by 3 pi r square h. Therefore, if I combine, if I'm looking at these two quantities, implies the volume of the cylinder is always three times the volume of the cone because cone is one third the volume of a cylinder or implies I can say volume of a cylinder is three times the volume of the cone that in that case so all I need to do is 120 times 3 the answer is 360 centimeter cube is the answer. Now let us look at the problem number 9 it is directly from the chapter called inequations or inequalities and here the problem specifies that negative of 8 is less than or equal to 2x is less than 8. 
So I am not worried about this. We'll come back to this part of the problem a little bit later. But I'll try to simplify the inequality as much as we can. So what I'll do is divide by 2 throughout. What I get is minus 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 4. This is what we got. Therefore, if uh, the, he did not specify as x belongs to w, then the answer will come, can be ranging from minus 4 to 4. That is, uh, I can say x belongs to close interval minus 4 to open interval 4. Right? But now, because he specifically said w, that is x belongs to w, implies whole numbers. Therefore, you know, on, a, on a real line, if I take on the real line, this is 1, 2, 3 and 4, this is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Right? These are the, uh, uh, if I plot all these values on the graph sheet, right? And then because he says x belongs to w implies x, the w will not contain all these values. These values are not contained in w. Therefore, what it contains is 0, 1, 2 and 3. Even 4 we will not uh, include in the solution because he says x is less than 4. Had he said x is less than or equal to 4, then I would have uh, added that also into my solution set. But because you said is x is less than 4, 4, we will not add 4 into solution set. Therefore, solution set will become option number C, that is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, this problem on probability is asking us to find the probability of a certain event. Certain event is here, the event is sun rising. We know that probability of any event E has to be less than or equal to 1 and more than or equal to 0. If at all probability of E is equal to 0, then I can say it is impossible event. But if I say probability of event E is equal to 1, then I can say it is a sure event that it is going to happen, it is bound to happen. And for any problem probability, the value of P of E has to be between 0 and 1. If at all you get an answer uh, less than 0 and more than 1, then you can think that you made a mistake somewhere. Now, because uh, sun rising from the east, it is for sure, right? Every day morning the sun is going to rise from the east only. There is no other alternative. Therefore, it is a sure event. If it is a sure event, then probability of S is always equal to 1, therefore option C is a correct option. In this problem, uh, he is asking us to solve this matrix equation with one variable where you need to find the value of x. Now, how do I, uh, first of all, how do I simplify it? So, if at all I would like to do it, so this I will be, this is 2, this is x, this is 0 and 1. And now we'll expand this. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 0 is 0. This is equated to again a square matrix which is 2 cross 2 where it is 8, 8, 12 and 1. Now I need to add the matrices. So corresponding rows and the corresponding columns to be added or corresponding elements to be added. So I'll add 2 and 6 that is uh, uh, 2 plus 6 comma x plus 3 uh, 0 plus 12 and 1 plus 0 this is equated to this matrix which is 8 8 12 and 1 therefore the corresponding uh, place of x plus 3 which is first row second column and in this case the first row second column is 8 therefore I will equate this x plus 3 is equal to 8 
if I solve it x is equal to 8 minus 3 which is equal to 5 implies the value of x is equal to 5 as per the solution. This is a direct problem from uh, coordinate geometry wherein he is, uh, he is talking about a centroid and he is given three vertices of a triangle. We should know that if at all I want to find the centroid of a triangle whose vertices are, let us say I have a triangle whose vertices are x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3 then the centroid is given by x comma y which is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 comma y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3 this is this is the formula to find the centroid understand centroid is a point of intersection of medians and the point centroid will divide the median in the ratio 2 is to 1 these are two things which you have to remember because the problem can be from anywhere uh, around this uh, region now in this case he has already gave the centroid as 6 comma 7 therefore i will say this is 6 comma 7 which is equal to now x1 plus x2 plus x3 so x1 is a x2 is 7 and x3 is 5 so i'll write that so a plus 7 plus 5 by 3 comma y1 plus y2 plus y3 that means 5 plus 9 plus 7 by 3 this is the centroid he's talking about now now because I need to uh, equate the corresponding uh, coordinates, the corresponding coordinates will be 6 is equal to, this is A plus 12 by 3 or if I want to further simplify, I uh, will put it over here, 18, 6 threes are 18 which is equal to A plus 12 or if I get 12 to the left hand side, so 18 minus 12 is equal to a or a is equal to 6 therefore the option is b where the value of a is equal to 6 and for this triangle the centroid will be given by uh, 6 comma 7 before going ahead to solve this problem you need to know two things one is in a circle if there is a chord and this chord subtends angle in the same segment how many angles it subtends let us say I'm talking about two angles then these two angles will be equal this is one uh, you need to understand second thing is in a circle I have a let us have a diameter this diameter is also a chord which passes through the center this diameter if it makes an angle in the semicircle that angle will always be 90 how many other angles you draw they will always be equal to 90 degrees these two things if you have in mind this problem becomes very very simple so what we need to do now look at is if you look at this AB is a chord this chord is subtending two angles one at the uh, at D and one at your this point which is your C now because it is making two angles and they are on the same side of the chord therefore this angle also will be equal to 35 by this logic just now we discussed now and he specifically said that AC is a diameter if AC is the diameter then angle made by the diameter will always be equal to 90 therefore angle made by angle ABC is 90 this is 90 this is 90 and this is uh, therefore now if I consider angle ABC then I can say angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to be 90 degree uh, 180 degrees 
angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to be 180 degrees or I can say because this is 90 I can say x plus 35 has to be equal to 90 or x is equal to 90 minus 35 which will give us 55 therefore the uh, the measure of the angle x is equal to 55 degrees this problem number 14 is very simple and straightforward he says nth the term of the uh, arithmetic progression is n plus 3 Therefore, he specifies that a n is equal to n plus 3. Therefore, if I, he says, find the first three terms. So, if I want to find the first term, I will substitute a1. a1 is equal to 1 plus 3, which is equal to 4. Then, if I want the second term, a2 is equal to 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. Then, a3 is equal to 3 plus 3 which is equal to 6 therefore your a1 comma a2 comma a3 are the first three terms which are equal to 4 comma 5 comma 6 therefore option C is your correct option this problem number 15 is mostly a memory based problem then logical problem as far as mathematics is concerned you need to remember this uh, uh, thing that a median of a group data or a group frequency distribution uh, is always a frequency cumulative frequency curve or in some some we also call as O give curve so this is either O gives curves or cumulative frequency curves because it cannot be a frequency polygon it cannot be histogram it cannot be a linear graph so linear graph so you remember this is only an O-give curve.